nerds! My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to The Nerdy Narrative. As you have already seen by the thumbnail, this is going to be my first attempt at a 24-hour reading vlog. So let's talk about the TBR for this reading vlog. I have started The Poison Song by Jen Williams. I am very early on. I have the audiobook for this one as well. So this will be my audiobook during the course of this reading vlog. You know, so anytime during the vlog that I'm not able to sit and read, such as when I walk my dogs, this is going to be what I'm going to be listening to. I am also going to read one volume of One Piece. I'm on number 17. I've been rereading the first 23 books of this manga, getting ready for the live action show at the end of the month. The next arc I got from the author, L. Stevenson, and that is The Boatmore Butcher. It's the completed story of The Boatmore Butcher. The first portion of the story was self-published at one time called The Goners. So if you read The Goners and you have been waiting for the rest of the story, this is coming out September 1st. So I want to read this one in its entirety so that I can get a review up for that one. If I have time, if something crazy happens and I get all of this stuff read, I want to read Lily by Kevin Andrew. This was sent to me by my friend Heidi. The first line on the description on the back says, two serial killers in a small town shrouded in fear. Serial killers was all I needed to see to want to read it. The goal is to just read as much as possible. I don't want to sit here and say, I want to read every single one of these books in a 24 hour period. That's not me. I don't read that fast. I do read a lot because I have a lot of time, but I am not a fast reader and I've never tried to just sit still for an entire day and read. So we're going to see how this goes together. I hope you're excited because I am. I will see you guys first thing in the morning. It is so hot here right now and I have been constantly going all morning. It is now 1139 and it is my first actual check-in where I chat with you all but I've been busy. I have been reading. So let's talk about all the things that I've read so far this morning since I started. I started at 6 a.m. So the official kickoff for the 24-hour readathon was 6 a.m. And I actually don't know if I mentioned this in my TBR clip that I filmed yesterday, but the first thing that I do every morning when I get up is read a short story. The collection that I am currently working on is Effects Vary by Michael Harris Cohen. I'm just about done. The short story that I read this morning was called I Pay You. That may sound funny, but one of the characters speaks in a broken form of English, so that does make sense as you get into the story. It's about a thief, and he has a client coming to his house that is against protocol, but he owes someone very deadly, and supposedly if he takes this client, he's going to be free and clear of this person. I didn't get it. I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't my favorite in the collection so far. That's okay. It 
it was still something I got up, started, and finished to start my day off. After I finished the short story, I still had some time before Chris and the dogs got up, so I picked up my manga that I'm reading, actually rereading. I'm rereading the first 23 volumes of One Piece. If you've been following the channel a while, then you know that I am extremely excited for the One Piece live action coming out next week, so I've been rereading the series, just having fun, refreshing my memory of all of the characters, their backstories, just so I can have fun comparing it to the live action. I really think this live action is going to be amazing. I feel that I am going to love it. I do understand there's going to be differences between the live action and the manga. I am prepared for that and I think, I feel just from all of the behind the scenes, all of the cast interviews that I've watched, the trailers I've watched, I really feel this group producing this is honoring the series and its fan and what it stands for. Today's volume finishes up the Straw Hats little side quest of stopping at a winter island in search for a doctor. Nami had contracted a fever. It was very, very high. I want to say it was around 106 and they knew they had to have a doctor. Not only do they find one, well two actually, they end up recruiting one into their little band of straw hats. I did purchase the audiobook for The Poison Song by Jen Williams. This is the final book in the Winnowing Flame trilogy, and I love to immerse and read anytime I can, especially when there is an amazing narrator involved. But my goodness, I came across some interesting things while I was running, listening to this one today, and I actually took a screenshot, which I'm about to find on my phone. Whenever I'm running or walking dogs or doing things where I am not where I can put my hands on the book to put a tab in to mark something that I feel is important to the story, something I want to make sure that I include in my review, I will simply take a screenshot of the audiobook so that I don't interrupt whatever it is I'm doing and I have a way to get back to it so that I can remember to mark it in my book. And I did have someone ask me in my annotating video why I didn't simply do the bookmark option because I don't want to stop whatever it is I'm doing. If I'm running, I don't want to interrupt my workout, unlock my phone, hit the bookmark, put it back up where it goes. And if I'm walking dogs, the last thing I want to have in my hand is my phone because they will see a lizard or a squirrel haul ass to go after it and I'm dropping my phone. These are expensive. They are not fun to replace. I have my iPhone programmed where all I have to do is tap the back twice and it automatically takes a screenshot and stores it into my photo album. That way, if I'm running, I can pull my phone off, tap it twice, put it back, if I'm walking the dogs, it's in my pocket. I just tap it twice and it keeps track of whatever it is that I wanna go back and mark in my book or even just make sure that I am putting in my writing journal, which is what I'm about to update after I finish talking to you guys. So I don't wanna get into too much detail of what's happening here because it is the third book in a trilogy. And if you haven't read the first two books, it won't make sense and it will spoil the series. There were several chapters of one character where they're going through something. And what I need for some of you to do, any of you who have read The Witcher material, I've watched the show only on Netflix. And this last season, there was an episode that felt very fillery, but Siri was in a desert. She was portaled, pulled through into this desert and she's trying to survive. Was it. that scene actually in the source material? Was that in the books or one of the short stories? The reason why I'm asking is because I kind of feel like it got ripped off from the winnowing flame because that happened. It was much better in the book than it was in the show. The version I have here says copyright 2019 and I just want to know if they ripped that scene off from Jen Williams. Jen, you might need to be getting your movie check. While we're talking about it, let's see how far long I've gotten. So last night I stopped at chapter 17, which was page 186. I don't want to lose my place there, but I want to go back and tab some things there that I found very interesting. How far along have I gotten? I am now on page 239. So I've got a pretty good chunk listened to. And for those of you who think that doesn't feel like a lot for the amount of time that I've been listening, I listen at 1x. I do not speed up my audiobooks at all. I just can't keep up with it if I speed it up. If I speed it up, it's not that I can't understand what the narrator is saying. It's if I speed it up, I then tune it out. If I keep it at its normal 1x, it's like something in my brain says, 
you have to pay attention when it's talking to you in 1x. I don't know, that's just me, and that is not me being negative or derogatory towards anyone who is able to speed their books up. I'm just not able to do so. That will catch me up to speed to right now, which it is now five minutes to 12. Before I stop and make myself lunch, I wanna spend time in my reading journal, writing down notes, and thoughts about the short story, the one piece, and what I've read of The Winnowing Flames so far. Then I'll make some lunch, and then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start The Boatmore Butcher. As I'm sure you all have noticed, I've already started decorating the house for fall and Halloween. I am ready. I'm so ready. Next Friday, Halloween Horror Nights starts at Universal Studios in Orlando. Chris and I got the frequent beer passes. We're going to be living there for the next two months. So be ready to hear a lot about that. Probably see a few shorts from things I'm going to experience there. But I am already in the mood. So seeing all this stuff, it's really got me in a mood to read some horror, some thriller. That is going to be exactly what the Boatmore Butcher is going to give me. So I am looking forward to starting that one. So I'll check in with you guys later. Boo -boo. Right here. Right. All right, so 105. I have just finished lunch and it is time to get into the boat more butcher. So I've just made it through the first three chapters of the Boat More Butcher. I've been reading about an hour, 10% in. I need to move around. It's so difficult for me to just sit still. So what I'm gonna do is switch back to my audiobook, which is Poison Song. Listen to that and on Wednesdays, I usually vacuum the stairs and vacuum upstairs. So I'm gonna do that, move around a little bit, get some blood flowing. Uh, I run five days a week, so I try to mix up my days between sitting for a couple hours and then moving around and doing something just to keep myself from stiffening up. And I also split up my cleaning between Monday through Friday, so that Saturday and Sunday, which is usually Chris and I go out and do stuff all weekend, and I don't want to be doing laundry or cleaning house, having any of that to muck up our weekend. So I split it up into daily chores. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'll probably make my afternoon a cup of coffee and then come back to reading this one. The Boatmore Butcher is by L. Stevenson. It comes out September 1st. The first third was originally self-published as The Goners, and if you've been around my channel for a while, you've probably read that book because I have been talking about it for years now. I love it. I've read the second part of it and it's now being published as one complete work. For somebody that's read the first part and you're thinking, I don't want to reread that, there are changes. Like the very first chapter has been added. It gives it more depth to the Boatmore Butcher's first victim. It makes it even creepier and it makes you, the reader, more invested in my opinion. I won't tell you anything further than that, but my goodness, even though I've read this book twice, I am still, my heart is just racing. This story takes place on the island of Boatmore where the only deaths that occur are accidental and old age. One of our main characters, Liam Price, that is why he moved his family there when he and his wife were expecting their first child. That's why they moved to the island of Boatmore for its safety. A year prior to when this story begins, Liam's child, his son Christopher, is run over and killed by a neighbor. A year later, Liam is still processing this death. His life is still very much off-kilter. 
He is a paramedic. His best friend is his partner, Martin Finn. And in the opening chapter, we find out these two are getting a new recruit, Ben Braithwaite, who is a character that I just absolutely fall in love with every single time I meet him. He is just the sweetest. He's so vulnerable and I just want to hug him. I just want to hug him. I want him to come out of these pages and be a real person for me to hug. And the chapter that I just ended on, Liam, Martin, and Ben go out on their first call. All the times I've read this, my heart never fails to race what's going on. For some reason, it's like I keep thinking, oh, maybe this time when I turn the page, it's gonna have a different ending. Nope, still the same ending. So anyway, I'm gonna go grab my headphones. I'm gonna vacuum the stairs and vacuum around up here, make some coffee, and then jump back into this one. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Are you ready for your dinner? <laughs> you are. Little pig. Little pig, you hungry? Okay, let's go get some dinner. Oh goodness. Puppy, if you're climbing up me, I can't go make your dinner. Yeah, you're just a cute baby. All right guys, let's go. So Really quickly before I take these heathens down and feed them, I am pausing on, what chapter was I on? Chapter 10. I am 28% of the way through the Boatmore Butcher and the Butcher is claiming victims left and right. Well, technically, he's not actually claiming victims because what it turns out is happening the victims, the people who are dying, it's not because the Boatmore Butcher is the one killing them. What he is doing, oh, I don't want to tell you because you might want to read this book. All I'm saying is bodies are dropping. I am falling in love with these characters all over again. L. Stevenson can write the most endearing characters, all of them. I love all of these characters. And even though I know somewhat how this story ends, not the very end, but for the majority of it, I know where this is going. I am loving meeting all these characters. I'm loving their interactions, their relationships with one another, this small town where everybody knows everybody. Seeing what kind of effect this small town community, this isolated island of people, how they're reacting to these deaths, the mystery of who is behind it. Why are they orchestrating all of these deaths? And what happened? What made them happen now? What made them choose now? So it's definitely an engaging mystery, heart pounding thriller. I am so excited to keep reading, but right now I'm about to go feed my two pups and then take them on their evening walk. I think I'm gonna give these two a nice lukewarm bath to help calm down after their walk today and turn them from yellow pups back into white and brown and black pups. check in. It is 6.56. So I've got about a hundred pages in on this one for today. That's as far as I'm going to go on this one. I'm about to sit down and got my journal here. I'm going to fill in the last of my notes that I want to write down, jot down about what I've read in this section of pages today. And then I'm just going to focus on the Boatmore Butcher. I think if I am able to, I can finish that one tonight. It is so fast paced and I can't get over that. I'm still on the section that I've read before. I've read The Goners twice, which is the section I'm still reading in. I'm almost to the second section. And even though I've read it, even though I know what happens, it's a thriller, it's a mystery. I know what that is. I don't know the end yet but it's still so good. It still makes my heart race. I'm still so excited to see these characters. The chapters flip-flop between the Boatmore Butcher 
and the characters of Boatmore Island. And the characters are so interesting themselves. Even if you just took the Boatmore Butcher out, I would still be very interested in these characters' lives and their interactions and relationships. They're just written so well. I'm so invested in all of them. But then you throw in this serial killer. Well, I can't call him a serial killer because he's technically... <sighs> y'all, y'all have got to read The Boat More Butcher by L. Stevenson. I just, I will have the pre-order link down in the description below. I am so excited for this to be released. You know, for the story of The Butcher to finally be completed and out in the world, I can't wait. So what I'm going to do is update my journal about The Poison Song. And then I'm going to sit down and focus on The Boat More Butcher. My husband is working late, but he should be home in the next hour or so, and then we'll probably take the pups on one more little night walk. And then I might go ahead and grab a shower and just like lay in bed and read, which might be a mistake for somebody trying to do a 24 hour reading vlog. All right, nerds, let's talk about how this 24 hour reading vlog went. I did not read the full 24 hours, which I knew that going in. I'm older, I like my sleep. I went to bed, I think around 10 or 10.30. I can't really remember because I've slept since then. But what I did do was read more than I normally would a day. I literally spent the entire day reading. There were some times I got up and did other things, but I had my audiobook going. So what did I learn with doing this? I learned that I much prefer watching other people do these videos than I like doing them. It might be different if I had spent the entire day reading without filming and updating and all of that. That kind of made it not as much fun to spend the entire day reading. Another thing that I learned is the amount of reading that I normally do in a day is the perfect amount of reading for me. Now I do read more than the average person because I have the time to do it. But I intersperse that with other hobbies and things that I like to do. Spending the entire day doing nothing but reading, I did not enjoy that. That was too much reading. Who knew that there was a limit to the amount of reading that I wanted to do in a day? I had no idea until I did it and then I'm like, you know what? I don't in fact like to spend the entire day reading. It's just crazy to me because I did spend the entire Hard day reading, but I did not get as many pages read as I thought I would. But I am a slow reader. I do stop and take a lot of notes and I write things down. I annotate my physical books and then if I'm walking around listening to an audiobook, I take screenshots of certain places that I want to make sure I go back and tab or either write down a quote. So all of that adds up to equal me being a slow reader, which is perfectly fine. So I actually am not quite certain how many pages I read. I know I read a complete manga, which is usually around 190 pages. I read 100 pages in The Poison Song, and then I made it 60% of the way through The Boat More Butcher, which that one, I want to say, is a little over 400 pages. So I probably read close to 300 pages in that one. And then, of course, I read a short story. So for me, that's a lot of pages per day because I think I usually average around 150 to 200 pages. So I'll call that a win. Will I ever do one of these again? Probably not. I've always struggled with doing vlogs because it's difficult for me to remember. I need to stop and do an update at an appropriate time. I just suck at that, which is why I usually just do my Friday video where I just wrap up everything I've done in the week thus far. That to me is way easier. I'm gonna stick with that and I'm just gonna stick with watching other channels do 24 hour reading vlogs. But if you watched it and you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments down below because if it gets a lot of love, then you know what? I will definitely consider doing another one if you enjoy it. So thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.